There are many guides on the internet that provide suggestions for string gauges for alternate and drop tunings for the guitar. And these are usually based on easily available packs of strings from popular manufacturers. Um, but let's get a little more quantitative than those guides and see maybe where those suggestions come from based on this formula which relates frequency to the vibrating length of the string or in this case essentially the scale length of the guitar tension and the mass per unit length Now, this analysis will be carried out to try to maintain equivalent tension between the standard tuning set and the drop tuning set. And the reason we want that is because this allows you to most closely approximate the neck relief and the string action of the original guitar. And these are the biggest factors in feel. Obviously, you could just put the same gauge on your drop-tuned and standard-tuned guitar, and the strings would be the same thickness, but the playability would be drastically different. So this attempts to preserve the playability. So let's manipulate this equation a little bit. Let's uh, square both sides first. Now, we care about gauge. That's what our analysis um, is trying to figure out the difference between uh, and the different tunings. So we're interested in this variable, the mass per unit length. So let's solve for that variable. First we'll cross multiply and then divide by everything other than the term mu. Then we'll create a ratio between our original and down tuned guitars. Or we'll actually make um, the one subscript go with the down tuned guitar and we'll see why that's just a little easier in the second in a second. So we have the ratio between T1 divided by 4L1 squared to F1 squared and um, this became a capital F, but that's fine. T2 divided by 4L2 squared, F2 squared. Now let's cancel out like terms. We are explicitly making the tension equal. So those are the same and those cancel. 4 is a constant, those both cancel. The scale length we're going to say is the same because I'm assuming that you're playing essentially the same guitars. If you have a standard tuned Fender and a down tuned PRS, um, then you can reintroduce those terms and uh, do that as a, a homework exercise. So we end up with the relatively simple ratio of mu1 over mu2 equals 1 over f1 squared over 1 over f2 squared or somewhat more uh, clearly mu1 over mu2 equals f2 squared over f1 squared. So we'll call F1 the original tuning, or sorry, the drop tuning. We'll introduce a new variable S for the number of semitones down from standard tuning we're tuned to. And therefore we can define F2 as, um, ah, we'll, we'll further say that F1 is just equal to 1 because we're dealing with ratios. We'll say that F2 is equal to 1 times 2 raised to the S over 12. Because remember, in 12 tone equal temperament, the geometric distance between any half steps, any two half steps, adjacent half steps, is 2 to the 1 12th power, since there are 12 semitones in an octave. So we can simplify this now and say mu1 over mu2. Let's go ahead and take the square root of this entire term so we can just ignore the, uh, the square terms on both of these. Equals F2, which is 2 raised to the S over 12, over 1. So this is quite easy. The reason we're taking the square root of this mu term, even though we started with the square root and manipulated it to solve for mu, 
is because the mass per unit length is essentially relating by proxy, by proportion, volume. Since with a constant density, um, the mass per unit length is directly proportional to volume. And length is, well, it's a measure of distance or length. So this term mu as a whole um, has units of area, specifically the cross-sectional area of the string. Um, it at least it is proportionally equivalent to it's in constant proportion so um, we just end up with this 2 to the s over 12 figure is the ratio between the original gauge and the new gauge um, we, we take the square root because the square root of area is, is length or in this case radius or um, diameter I mean, I'm ignoring all the actual numbers and just going with uh, the, the proportionality here because that's what we're calculating, a ratio. So this just equals 2 um, raised to the s over 12. Um, it's going to trigger me that there's no end parentheses. Oh, it puts it automatically. So. Oh, <laughs> okay. We need that cell, um, A2 over 12. Okay. So, we can see that these are the, uh, the ratios that we would have to multiply our string gauge by to find a, uh, a new string gauge with equivalent tension. Just as an example, I tune my guitars to C, mostly so I can sing along with them better. Uh, it's easier for me to see mo sing most standards tuned down like that. So I'd be looking at this, uh, this row. So if I usually use a set of 10 to 46 strings, then I would multiply each of these gauges by 1.26, really every gauge in the set. But we'll just look at the top and bottom strings. And we find that my set would go from a 12.6, this is not the most convenient way to use a calculator, <laughs> or I'm just an idiot, uh, equal mix of both, a 12.6 a to a 57.96, or essentially a 12 to 58 or 13 to 58 set. So starting with any gauge that you like to play with, if you want to determine what gauge you should move to to maintain equal tension then you can multiply every uh, every gauge in the set by these coefficients so this would be oh well yeah this would be E flat this would be D D flat C C flat just kidding B um, B flat um, this would be, uh, how does the alphabet go? A. So some baritones are tuned to this scale and, and so on and so forth. I don't need to tell you how the notes go. But you can watch all those guides or you can determine um, exactly what string gauges you, could use, you should use. And notice this really only works if you're going from wrapped to wrapped or plane to plane because wrapped strings of the same gauge are actually uh, have less tension than, than their corresponding plain strings. But, um, so, so if you play with a wound third or something, that throws it off. But this, this gives you a good idea, and you can kind of interpolate all those numbers um, as, you, uh, as you wish. You, you can obviously do a little extra math and then get more precise. And it obviously matters for strings. It's most accurate for strings within the same series and manufacturer so you can't use this to 
you know, figure out what gauge of phosphor bronze strings you should be using on your acoustic based on the gauges of nickel wound strings you're using on your electric. But it's a little better than just blindly taking someone else's advice, or you can at least fact check them. So, um, happy math and happy guitar playing. <laughs>